At Warner Brothers, we believe in the power of great stories. And part of telling a great story is not telling the same story all the time. It's coming up with diversity through different media. We're based here in the Boston studio. And we get to work with all the different stakeholders throughout WB Games. Some of our games tie into film IP, some of them tie into television, comic books. Warner Brothers has a big collection of IP. We've developed Golf Clash, Mortal Kombat Mobile, Game of Thrones, Lego. The great thing about games is that you're not just being told a story, you're creating a story. You won't often see the same story across television, film, and games. With a game, the player has agency both within the narrative, but there's also the way that you choose to engage with the game. When you choose to play, when you don't choose to play, what modes you want to engage with. Let's take this from the point of view of a game feature developer. So you've got somebody who's developing a new feature in a game. They need specific information to basically inform them about how the player interacts with the feature. We want to be able to understand what the behavior of the device, the behavior of the game, and how that affects players. We don't necessarily know which of the things we've put out into the world are going to be most exciting. If you think about how console games are released these days, usually there's a midnight release where everybody who's pre-ordered the game gets it within an hour of each other. They all show up and they all start streaming. So we end up with a land rush effect. And it's important to be prepared for that. We pull that data in and run it into this massive queuing system. It is built on top of an open source project called Apache Kafka. We then process that data through an elastic MapReduce or EMR using Apache Spark. It puts that data immediately into storage into Amazon S3. Another part of our pipeline then loads that data into Amazon Redshift, which is a large scale clustered data warehousing system, which is the primary place that most of our customers pull their data from. When you get into a game where you're spending hundreds of hours with a narrative or with characters, you have players that are in the game 24 seven. Not everybody has the time or inclination to engage with the forums, the community. If you get a data point and you only have 10 minutes to act on it, you need to have data that's no more than 10 minutes old. Depending on the business case that we're trying to address, you need the types of pattern recognition that machine learning brings request I get all the time is, okay, but can I see that every morning, right? I would like to see how this is changing. I would like to see how this is evolving. If we had to put a person on running that process every morning to provide the result, we'd run out of people. We'd run out of people real fast. The accessibility and the variety of tools that we can get in the AWS ecosystem, we can go from a business challenge to an idea to a prototype very, very quickly. Being able to just put that in SageMaker gets us to a solution very fast. Having all of our data accessible in Redshift for analysis means that if someone's curious, they can write a query and they get a result back. We're definitely a user of Amazon's SageMaker service, and we use that SageMaker service to essentially train the machine to take the actions. Then we use it to take live data that we're ingesting and produce those little decisions that we would then feed back either into the game or into another business process because there are just so many ways that we can leverage this information. The answer to a question is somebody writing a query, not going out and processing the data and transforming it and bringing it in. And we want to be able to have a suite of tools that can just access it. To me, it means that we can focus on the fun part.